Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the host and uh, correspondent for government and political matters. Today, our guest is Hudson School District Superintendent Nick Ouellette. I should say Dr. Nick Ouellette. Nick, Thank you, welcome Jim. back here. All Thank right. You. Well, uh, folks have probably realized that uh, life is a little bit different uh, these days and uh, it has affected us and how we're taping our segments and we're doing this from our respective homes. Um, I appreciate your uh, willingness to get set up to do this. And um, let's, uh, while we're on that subject of um, changes for COVID-19, I think that's probably where we'll focus our interview. Um, Dr. Nick, why don't you take us through, um, you know, what happened leading up to the governor's order um, that closed schools and you your decision as to when to close them. I think it was a Friday that the governor issued the order and said it had to be done by the end of business on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, essentially, you know, the governor issued the order, I believe it was Friday the 13th. Um, and uh, it, this all really started for us about a week earlier uh, when we uh, had sent a group of kids to a Destination Imagination event. Um, up in St. Croix Falls. Uh, we got word uh, late Monday night uh, that would have been um, probably closer to about the uh, 7th or 8th of, of, uh, of March that um, there was an individual there that uh, had tested positive for uh, COVID-19. Uh, it was that, actually uh, during the school board meeting, wasn't it, that you got yeah, that? During the, yeah, during the board meeting, uh, my phone started kind of blowing up a little bit with text messages and you need to call me kind of things. And so uh, we were able then to kind of give the board a little bit of a heads up as to what's going on. At that point, what we did is uh, on Tuesday, we put out, a, we, you know, Monday night, we put out a communication to parents and families to let them know that, you know, this is what's what we've been made aware of, um, that we were in contact with uh, county public health officials. On Tuesday, uh, we really started gearing up uh, because we knew that, you um, you know, there, there's a chance or possibility that if all of a sudden we started showing cases with our kids, that, that they could come in and shut our district down. So we really started to ramp up. What, what does it look like if we get shut down? Um, how do we carry on with education? What, what does it look like for our employees? You know, uh, will they continue to get paid and all of these things? And so we, I feel like, you know, having that, um, it was somewhat of a false alarm for us because we did not have any kids uh, related to that that ended up getting sick that we were made aware of. Um, it, it gave us about a four or five day uh, lead time on what the government, uh, what the governor's uh, plan was then later in the week. And uh, this whole situation has evolved rather rapidly. So then the, dis the governor issues uh, the order on, uh, I think, the 13th and um, school then shut down on Tuesday rather than the Wednesday that you had an extra day. Why, why then? Yeah, so, so the governor issued the order on Friday the 13th saying that he'd like all schools to be shut down by end of day on Wednesday. Um, and, and one of the things that uh, uh, what we did is we, we looked at uh, different things, different models, um, because not only do we want to obviously we're closing in to ensure the safety of, of our kids and our staff, but we're also looking at um, giving parents enough time uh, to make adjustments to their schedules, uh, to provide child care and things along those lines. And so uh, that's why uh, we took two out of the three days that the governor gave us to continue to operate school so that it gave parents enough time to um, to uh, set up child care and, and, and make adjustments. Because we weren't quite sure what it looked like. You know, the original governor's order uh, was, you know, closed by end of day that Wednesday and going to be back open again on April 6th. Um, but at that time, you know, we were kind of hoping that was going to be the case, but we didn't know. And so we wanted to make sure we, you know, we were getting all of our ducks in a row, both of our kids and our staff. And uh, they were prohibiting, you know, groups gathering. First it was 100, then it was 50, and uh, then it was 10. And then the stay at safer at home uh, order was issued. And uh, that actually came out while Hudson was on spring break. Talk a little bit about how the timing of Hudson School District spring break played into all of this? Well, um, you know, one of the things that, that happened with our spring break, typically we would have people going all over the country on spring break time. Uh, but with this uh, COVID virus, essentially what happened is um, almost all of them 
uh, were canceled. Almost everybody's trips were canceled. And so uh, luckily we had a full, uh, full set of staff, administrative staff that hadn't gone anywhere on spring break. We were able to kind of work through some things and get messaging out, get communication out to parents and, and, uh, and to students so that uh, we were ready when they came back uh, to school uh, today. Um, but, you know, the spring break, so we, we had class virtually for about three days uh, that first week, then we went on spring break, and then now here we are again back in back in class. Um, so we're we're continuing to kind of work through it. We're trying to get some of the bugs out of it. I mean, when you all of a sudden try to take almost six thousand kids and and put them into a virtual environment in a matter of days, it it, it definitely has uh, some logistical challenges in order in order to ensure that all kids are are receiving education. And uh, tell us a little bit about you know because this all started because of that. Um, the preparation started, as you stated, for the Hudson um, folks with the Destination Imagination um, gathering in Osceola about two weeks uh, before the closed school order was issued. So tell us a little bit about what who were you listening to when it came to this? Um, was it the CDC? Was it the president? Was it the governor? Um, because you got all these entities and all these experts, but where were you taking your um, direct lead? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because the, the thing that happens anytime any of this goes down, of course, you know, I get lots of emails from parents that want to share with me articles that they've read on the internet or, or things that they, they have found or have heard and, and all well-intentioned individuals um, and wanting to know why we're doing this or why we're doing that. And so uh, what we made a decision pretty early on that we were going to take our direction from St. Croix County Public Health and uh, the state county or the state health uh, officials. And so uh, that was gonna kind of be our clearinghouse of, of what are best practices and what we should be doing as a, as a school district. And so um, very early on, we get it, we were in touch with not just St. Croix County Health, uh, but also Pierce and Polk County uh, Health Departments as well. Uh, so that we were kind of, it was almost kind of like a tri-county effort to make sure that we were all uh, responding in a similar manner. Okay. Now, uh, tell us a little bit. Of, you mentioned the communications you were getting from parents um, and suggestions on what the school district ought to do. Now that um, we're past spring break um, and the situation continues to evolve, the president uh, this morning extending um, the idea of social distancing and so forth to the end of April rather than the Easter deadline that he was starting to hint about. So it's looking like for sure school is not going to go back by the end of April. And I know many courts, being a lawyer, that many courts have issued orders that extend well into May uh, mm -hmm. for the same thing. So um, right now, what's the current plan? Uh, right now, the current plan is we will be continue to be closed through the end of April. Um, uh, well, actually, the, the governor's stay-at-home order, I think, goes till uh, the 26th of April or the 25th of April. Um, I'm assuming, you know, that that all gets kind of revamped as the president came out yesterday and, and recommended everything being closed through the end of April. Um, but really, as, as uh, part of the, uh, the order that the governor had put out, um, he, he can only go for a certain amount of time. He can only put an order out for a certain amount of time, and then it takes an act of the legislature to keep this, keep this thing going. And I think that's why he picked the 25th or 26th of, of April. It had to do with the amount of time that he was able to, to, I think, declare the emergency. So I would imagine we'll be hearing more about that, that it's basically indefinite. You know, we've basically been told that we're in an indefinite state of closure until they tell us we can come back. Um, we're hoping that we can get back at some point this year. However, uh, you know, every day that goes by and you see the spike in the cases, um, it seems to be a, uh, uh, a more and more of an uphill battle than what maybe we originally thought. And uh, I mean, you and I have been in communication a lot this month, probably mm -hmm. spoke more this month than we have for the previous 10 months. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, just because of the way things have evolved now, uh, we're continuing to meet uh, as a school board. In fact, we adjourned our work session to make sure that we had a full week of school running virtually um, mm -hmm. for this week. And then uh, we'll have a predominant amount of the agenda for next Monday is talking about COVID response. Um, what yeah. do you anticipate being discussed at that meeting? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, the, the response that we're, um, you know, we're going to give an update on kind of some of the logistics that we have going on. You know, our buildings are closed, our grounds are closed, um, 
kind of go through that. It means we don't have custodial staff in place. We'll give you an update on our school age care programming that we're providing, um, you know, child care for uh, members of the medical community and first responders. Uh, and so we're working through those things. And, and then also we'll talk about our, um, our food and our meal preparation distribution for our kids uh, that are in need of that. But a couple of the other things that are going to be coming down um, the pipe that we're going to be talking to the board about will be just the education component. You know, we're kind of shifting now more to a some level of an accountability model uh, for the at-home work. You know, originally when we thought we were going to be out for essentially eight school days, it was, okay, we're, we're trying to, you know, give some type of an enrichment. You know, we're trying to hold steady is basically, you know, not slip. Uh, whereas now if we're, we're talking about being out a total of 10 weeks of the school year, um, you know, the, the, the level ramps up quite a bit and, and what the expectations are. You know, we're also fine tuning a lot of our communication with parents. You know, obviously we're trying to get as much information out as we can. Teachers are, uh, administrators are, but we're also finding that some, it, it can be overwhelming, especially when it comes to the, the homeschool part of things. And so we're trying to constantly revamp that. Uh, we'll be giving an update on, on those components. We'll be talking a little bit about, um, you know, the, the plan, uh, what a recommendation would be with seniors and uh, kids that are in credit, basically um, sixth through 12th grade and, and what the recommendation would be to kind of move to um, potentially a pass-fail uh, grading practice for this semester versus this great, uh, actual grades. It's something that's, that's being done around the state, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we'll also talk about um, the compensation, the continuing compensation of our employees uh, and what that looks like. And, and also we have some logistics with, we have 12 month employees that um, have vacation that usually if they can't use it, they lose it type of thing. And so we'll be talking about, um, you know, are there some adjustments that we can make to allow them to carry into the next year a little bit since you really can't go anywhere uh, right now. And so um, we'll have some of those conversations with the board as well that night. All right. Um, you mentioned uh, the meals and meal preparation. So the school district is still making meals. And uh, is there any kind of need assessment associated with it? Do you have to be able to qualify to get those? Nope. Lunches? Nope. All you have to do is drive through. It's on the north side of the high school. It's from 1030 to one o'clock every day. Um, you drive through. You don't even have to get out of your car. You just let us know how many meals you need uh, for the kids in your in your home. And it's it's kids ages basically one to 18 would qualify. Uh, so even some of those kids that aren't uh, even in school yet, we would still be able to provide them with a meal through the federal food, uh, food assistance program. Uh, and then also the backpacker program uh, that has been uh, such a great program for our school district and our families for a long time. Uh, they have also partnered uh, where they are, they are giving out uh, additional food for the entire family. Um, and they were there, I think, Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, as well. So People can get some additional food that way and, and some other household staples. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, we did send out a communication as well, reminding people because we didn't, we didn't deliver meals over spring break or we didn't, sorry, we didn't provide meals over spring break. Uh, but now we've started back up now that spring break is over, uh, but also giving them information of where they get, if they need some level of delivery service through the backpacker program, where they can find that information directing them uh, to their website. Okay. And then what about children? We, you know, so there is no need assessment for the lunches. What about, um, how are students learning if they don't have internet at home? Yep, absolutely. And so that was one of the things that we started about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, when this thing started to kind of ramp up a little bit. Um, you know, Dave uh, Grambo, our social superintendent and I, we had a conversation about, we need to figure out who has what at home and what, what level of internet capability do they have and connectivity and so we started uh, we sent out a survey to all all parents in our district uh, wanting a response as to you know what devices do they have available at home for kids to use what type of internet do they have at home for kids to be able to use uh, that that brought in about 4700 students worth of responses uh, and then we spent a whole other week the whole next week after that the administrative staff administrative uh, support staff, um, uh, then spent, uh, you know, about a week calling all the families that didn't respond to the survey, following up so that we knew exactly uh, every family, uh, what they had. And then what we were able to do was order uh, hotspots through the educational program 
uh, through T-Mobile and get those uh, distributed for those for those kids that, that didn't have access to internet at home. And if they didn't have devices to use at home, we also had the ability to check out Chromebooks and, and other devices as well. Yeah, but Hudson has had uh, Chromebooks for grades six through 12 for several years now. Yeah, so six through 12, uh, kids take their Chromebooks home every day. We have classroom sets of Chromebooks in grades three through five. Um, and But what we're finding uh, with the younger kids, most of them had devices at home to be able to use, so we weren't needing to send them home. Um, so the six through 12 uh, graders, they took their Chromebooks home and um, you know they're using those uh, devices. And then the younger grades as needed, we've supplemented as needed. Well, what kind of communication can parents expect to see um, as they go through this period um, without sending their kids to school? Yeah, I mean, it's, this is a, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a blend. We want to make sure that, you know, we're getting plenty of communication out, but not overwhelming people. You know, one of the things that we, uh, right off the bat, uh, that first week, you know, we had parents that called and said, hey, I appreciate all the communication on the, on the assignments, but, you know, I have two high schoolers and a middle schooler, and I just got 24 emails, one from each teacher, from my three kids, and I'm having trouble keeping it all straight. Um, and so we, we tried to basically, you know, bring all those things together so that it, it's, it's a little bit more user friendly for them. So what's going to happen is, you know, parents are going to get communication from teaching staff. Um, and it's been more streamlined than what we've been doing. In addition to that, um, in grades uh, K through five, the teachers will be calling uh, every student's parents uh, in their class every week to check on how are things going? Is there anything you need? Is there anything that's not making sense? And then grades six through 12, uh, the advisors will be calling their about 20, 25 advisory students um, every week, calling their parents and ask them how things are going. Uh, what the, what do they need? Is there anything else the school district can do? And I know you don't have a crystal ball to be able to say definitively whether kids will be back in school or not, but what would your estimate be for um, a drop dead date, if you will? I, that's not a good term for it, but you know, at some point where the decision would be made, um, it's probably better to just finish out the year as is. You know, uh, we've had a lot of conversation about that. We, you know, we, similar to this, we've had a lot of Zoom meetings uh, with administrators. And I think, to be honest with you, I mean, we would, if they allowed us to bring the kids back at just about any point, you know, we would take it to get some level of closure on the year, um, whether it be a week or two weeks or three weeks, you know, we'd take just about whatever we can get. You know, I think we were scheduled to get out uh, June 8th or June 7th, I think, originally. And so, you know, if all of a sudden they said May 15th, we could come back, that'd be great. We would bring the kids back and try to, you know, uh, continue where we've left off from the virtual schooling and things along those lines. Um, I know a couple things that are on people's minds right now, like what are we going to do about prom? What are we going to do about graduation? Things along those lines. And, uh, you know, those are all things that, you know, we'll continue to kind of kind of work through. We will have a graduation. At some point, we will have a graduation. Um, you know, it may be on the same exact day that we were planning on having it. It may be, uh, it may be in a later date, but um, we want to make sure that those seniors know that they'll get the opportunity to walk across the stage and, and graduate. Uh, even though graduating um, from high school isn't necessarily one and the same as, as commencement, that commencement activity is, is something that's pretty important to a lot of families and a lot of kids uh, as that culminating you know, activity for them. And so those are all things that as we continue to move forward, um, you know, look, there'll be more information coming out about that as well. You know, it seems like everything keeps changing by the day. And so for some of the, what we try to do is what we've told our team is basically we're always looking about six weeks out. So anything that's uh, six weeks out in the horizon, if we feel like it's more than likely not going to happen, we're going to start rescheduling and, and changing and adjusting and things like that. And just kind of constantly keeping it like a six week look ahead. So it could be at least May 1st before a final decision is made about scheduling of graduation. Yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, I, I would think that over the next couple of weeks, I think we'll have a pretty good idea. Uh, you know, is the governor going to keep this order in place past, you know, April 30th? Or is the president going to keep the order in place by, past that time? And then once we know that, we'll be able to make, you know, some of those adjustments and, and, and what will happen from there. Uh, what about uh, assessments? Because we had different uh, grades um, 
having tests. We, we, luckily, we did get in the ACT mm -hmm. test before all of this came in. But what about the assessments that would have happened between now and the end of school year? What will happen with those? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a, you know, we were supposed to have our state state assessments. Um, those those are looking like they're not going to happen. Uh, the state has requested a waiver from the Federal Department of Education uh, so that uh, they may not happen this year. We're looking in to see what type of uh, alternate assessments that we typically do with kids that are computer-based that maybe they could do even remotely so that we could have some type of measure or marker on as to how things are going. Uh, as you said, the ACT, we were able to get about 98% of our kids tested on the ACT testing day, um, maybe maybe 96%. Uh, so we feel pretty good about that. Um, so we're, you know, some of those things are in a good spot, but um, yeah, it's, this is, this is really kind of an odd situation. I mean, we've never, we've never had anything quite like this. They've never really shut school down uh, for this period of time and, and this drastically. So um, this is quite, this is quite a different, uh, quite a different animal for us. Well, in the delay of those assessments or cancellation of assessments, uh, then could have impact on school report cards and so forth. Yeah. And I think, you know, the state is part of the waiver system. So we have the waivers for the hours of instruction. Um, and they also requested a waiver um, under uh, every, every child succeeds act. Um, and, and, you know, all those things they're requesting waivers and the federal government, I think is granting those waivers because again, without some of that testing, you wouldn't have the ability to, to plug it into, you know, to district and, and build in report cards. And so, um, they're working through all of those different components. I think the name of the game with everything uh, is about flexibility. Uh, our state education department has been extremely uh, good uh, about being flexible. I talked to colleagues of mine from my home state of Iowa, and, and um, I can tell you that you know I'm quite happy with the guidance we're getting out of our out of our folks uh, down in Madison, and and you know just the the really do the best you can for as many kids as you can, and and try as much as you can try, you know, I, I know there are a lot of districts that aren't providing any level of education outside of, of uh, now that there's a stay home. I, I have um, uh, relatives whose um, children are getting nothing from their school district during the closure. They're not, uh, they're not providing any type of virtual education or distance learning. And so I really feel uh, lucky that we're able to provide that uh, for our kids. All right, so you mentioned flexibility and it's constant evolving situation. Where can folks go to get most current uh, status um, or possibly frequently asked questions answered? Yeah, so if you go to our website, www.hudsonraiders.org, right at the top of our website, uh, there's a big red banner. Uh, it's COVID-19 updates related to the school district. You click on that. It has all of our past communications on it. It has you know every, everything that we're doing and and pertinent information related to it. It's kind of your one one stop shop. Uh, so it's just a big red banner at the top of the website. All right. Well, Nick, I want to thank you uh, on behalf of the board as well as uh, the general public for all the work that you're doing. And I know that you were among the many people who canceled spring break plans. <laughs> so you were able to to uh, stay have already spent a lot of time at home with your family, right? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting, because I think, you know, we're going on day 10 of, of kind of uh, shelter at home or, or safe at home. And to think that there's another 30 days on top of this is, um, is, is quite a, a daunting thought, uh, you know, but um, we'll, we'll get through it. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for families to know, too, that we understand that, you know, that this is a challenging situation for them and for their kids. And, you know, what we're hoping to accomplish with, with the virtual and distance education is is to really, you know, try to provide services to kids the best of our ability. We're just not willing to write off the last 10 weeks to the school year. And um, and so, but we also understand that, that sometimes things get in the way of being able to do some of those activities at home. And, and sometimes it's just not happening. You know, certain days it's just not happening. And, uh, and we get it and we understand it. And we want people to, you know, be able to uh, know that we're here to provide those supports and services and that they also need to take care of themselves and their well-being and their mental health as they're all kind of uh, isolated in their own homes and, and things along like that. So, 
All right. Well, Dr. Nick, uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we will continue to watch on the school website there for updates. Good luck with uh, the rest of the school year. And I guess we'll see you Monday night for that uh, next school board meeting. Perfect. I appreciate it. Look forward to it. Thanks, Jamie. And I want to thank our viewers for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson. Keep watching.